In Minnesota, it's not hard to find a Viking, but a Viking of this kind is rare. How's morale, Viking shift? Morale is high. We got a Norse god and stroke beautiful glass weather for the drink. On what they called the impossible row, Andrew Town, along with five others, made his way from Chile to Antarctica, 655 nautical miles through the Drake, the most treacherous passage of water in the world, on a boat, a rowboat. Why? <laughs> lots of reasons. Personal, I had lots of personal reasons for the row and also reasons that sort of go beyond myself. From a personal perspective, I love nature and I love testing my mental and physical limits. As someone who was inspired to change pretty young, the impossible feat didn't seem so impossible for him. I was pretty overweight when I was a teen, and I made a very conscious choice to try and become more active, jogging just a half block, and then eventually walking onto a varsity Division I rowing team with no prior experience. Twelve and a half days of surviving the elements. The waves kept crashing down on me over the bow and soaking everything that I had taking turns, sleeping, while others rode. Welcome to the bow cabin. What up, y'all? Town says the journey was more about the process of getting to the start. The relief came from ending the row and being safe after 12 and a half days of <laughs> adrenaline-inducing fear and exhaustion. The satisfaction comes from knowing that our training and our preparation <laughs> actually was enough. The expedition brought him back to a turning point in his life, the moment he faced his fears and took a step towards athleticism. The hardest adjustment for me was the very first time I took that major step outside of my comfort zone. It was going from a person with no athletic background to trying to be a Division I varsity athlete. <laughs> Perhaps that bravery he showed himself as a high school kid was the only thing he needed to face his fears, this time on the world stage. It was sort of a reaction to the teasing that I experienced in high school that I wanted to see if I could be somebody that people around me thought that I wasn't. And that, I think, was, in retrospect, a pretty deep motivator for me. It's kind of incredible, huh? That is a deep dive in yourself <laughs> to be like, I'm gonna take this and then I'm, go I'm gonna jog a half block and then years later. <laughs> well, I'm sure there were, there were more moments sure. in between the two moments, but what I thought was really profound that he said, um, he said, you know, bullying as yeah. for, among kids is very real and this is, you know, best case scenario. He acknowledges that he is very proud of the person he's become, but he also knows that bullying also leads to a different ending for a, a sad, terrible ending for a lot of people, so he just, also wanted to kind of share that message. That's really cool, and it can act as fuel for anybody that's all any, been the underdog or get picked on. Of what can you turn that into if you're faced with that? The other thing I just as what does he do now? Like after you've done that as a young man, like okay, now what? <laughs> well, he's a consultant, day okay. job. Um, yeah. He travels a lot. Um, he says he actually kind of wants to focus on a few things in his life that um, he wants to get really good at, whether that's social life, making good friends, yeah. or um, other hobbies that cool. are less intense. Making friends will be easy after that, I'm sure. Thank you, Sharon.